is DK Lock, aside from their machining quality, their dimensional control, and all of those things, able to perform this way? The secret to the two ferrule design is right here. It's all in the back ferrule. This is our particular back ferrule design with the selective nose hardening. The key is we have a hinge point that is very close to the nose that allows the nose of the ferrule to turn in abruptly on the tube and deliver maximum bite depth and sealing capability. The rest of the ferrule, because it's non-treated, is still, is still ductile and malleable and soft and it's able to react to the dynamics of pull-up installation and allowed to bow and to squat based on the wall thickness of the tube that, that the installation is being used with. The things to point out is uh, the hinge point is displaced from up here at the nose to back here. You'll see in a minute how this ferrule behaves during pull-up. It actually hinges away from the tube in the rear. Uh, there's a very thin cross section right here now so they have to have extreme tolerance control to make sure that doesn't get out of hand and get too thin or they'll have cracking ferrules. You'll see that the nut drives forward during pull up which pushes the back ferrule into the front ferrule which drives it down the body bevel ramp and onto the tube. And then as the front ferrule basically stops its forward movement, the back ferrule goes in to grip back here and to seal. And since it's a two, two stage connection here, the back ferrule, when it really delivers its maximum grip, has the ability to push the tube forward through the front ferrule slightly, which would break any seal that, that was made up anyway. So the front ferrule's job is to seal on the body bevel. The back ferrule's job is to seal back here and to lift the front ferrule into a live loaded position.